joining us, and thank you especially Becky for coming. She's our client. I'm Darla Parrish. This is Samantha Allen and Dean Hodges. And we're here to talk to you about Tricolor Auto, um, about what their situation was, what we tried to do for them, and what those results were. Um, Tricolor Auto goes to auctions all across the country and buys used cars. They then ship them to a relocation center where um, they spend a lot of time and energy making them into beautiful cars for their customers. And once that is done, they ship them off to car lots in California, Texas, and Oklahoma. Um, we used Excel for primarily for cleaning up our data and for doing some simple analysis. Um, once we got to the point where, especially in our reconditioning data, when we had multiple records for each vehicle, we um, put everything in access so that we could easily aggregate and um, match up the data between our different data sets. And then um, from there, we were able to get the values that we needed for our animal models. Um, as probably with many of you, we started out really simple and really basic, and then we kind of built out as we got more and more information. Um, as we went along, we realized that the more data we had, the more data we needed, and um, Becky and Dave from Trey Collar were very um, kind in getting that information to us. So now I'm going to talk to you about the linear programming model. Essentially, we had four different models. Three of those pertain to different budgetary situations, which we'll discuss soon. And the last one is kind of a what-if scenario. What if Trey Collar had more capacity, or if they had more supply, so that they could pick and choose which cars would be the best cars for them to recondition and sell? So as far as assumptions go, um, the main one is that the historical data will reflect future data, and anything that is not in the model is equal to zero. So we eliminated over 75 cars because of incomplete data, and we are assuming that all of those will say no production on those models. Um, decision variables is simply each vehicle that we included in our model, um, and then the objective is to maximize profit. Each profit function will correlate to whatever the budget was for that situation. So four constraints, as I said, three budgets. The first one is our current budget, which is just based on a historical spend of what Tricolor normally spends each year. Our current ideal budget is what Tricolor wishes to spend currently, so that's around $2,000 per vehicle. And the current, or the target situation, um, is basically what Tricolor wants to spend on cars, SUVs, and trucks. And then finally, we have our non-creativity <coughs> constraints. We included these so that if a car is not optimal in our model, Tricolor can choose to produce zero, but the car must be positive. Um, Compensated with supply. So essentially what this is, is since we eliminated some of the vehicles from our previous model, we wanted to account for those in our new model so that we could increase supply a little bit. Um, capacity, we were given a figure of 450 cars per month for the reconditioning center, but that was not necessarily what capacity was hitting currently, so we used a revised capacity of 370 cars per month. Um, demand, we just included constraints for approximately how many of each car does Tricolor's um, plan on selling each year. So here's just a quick um, little bit of a sample of our data. So the first 13 cars are what we have data for. Um, it was kind of interesting to compare across the current situation, ideal current situation, target situation, because you would see a maximum car, so you could sell, or you could produce 30 cars um, for the Cadillac CTS, so in the current and ideal current, you produce the maximum supply. However, in the target situation, you produce less. This tells us that that car is still attractive, but it's not necessarily as attractive as another vehicle. For, and on the opposite end, you have a Dodge Durango, where our model says don't produce it ever, no matter what. And then in the far right column, you have the what-if analysis values. And so you'll see for X3, which is the Chevy Colorado, um, you shouldn't produce it throughout the first two budget scenarios. But then in the target scenario, you have uh, the maximum value produced. So this indicates that this is a cheaper car to recondition or it's more um, revenue generating, but they just don't purchase enough from the auction. So here's just a quick visual. Um, the giant spikes indicate cars that are most attractive to Tricolor. Um, this basically, the numbers don't necessarily matter. What matters is that for these particular decision variables, these cars are most attractive. So here is just a quick breakdown of our objective function values and each of the situations. So the most interesting thing is the target situation. We would expect more profit from the situation because the budget is smaller spent. However, at the current operational standards, uh, this is why there are less vehicles produced. So, 
Chancellor needs to consider um, reducing their costs right now in order to meet these budgetary constraints. So here are just a list of the most attractive vehicles. Like I said previously, the number on the right-hand side does not matter so much as long as we know that Ford Fusions are uh, significantly, significantly more attractive than a Ford F-150. Um, interestingly, since the F-150 and the 1500 are both trucks, we can say that the Dodge Ram is a more attractive truck to sell than the Ford F-150. And then here are these attractive vehicles that got assigned a value of zero from our model. So this implies that they either don't generate enough revenue or the costs are just simply too high. So another model that we decided to investigate to help reduce um, the operation costs for Tricolor was producing a, a transportation model. And there were three important pieces of information that we needed to develop the transportation model. And those were the three option sites to get our um, supply quantities. The, um, the, the, the quantities for demand, which came from our um, dealerships, and the cost to transfer um, the, the cars from the auctions to the dealerships. And so um, some of the assumptions that we had to create for this model um, was first the cost. We um, didn't know all of the cost to transport um, the cars from the auctions to the dealerships, and um, um, Tricolor was great enough to provide us with um, most of those costs, but we had to um, develop an analysis and estimate some of those um, costs. So um, this model is not specifically fully accurate, but with our best estimates, this is um, what we came up with. Um, the, um, the auction data is how we got our supply constraints. And um, um, so whatever the dealership sold, uh, that's how we got our supply quantities for our vehicles. Um, there were, we knew that supply had to be greater than demand. And so um, there were a couple cases where supply was, um, was less than demand, and so we had to do um, a few calculations to force those um, supply um, numbers up and push it back into the balance of, uh, so it would be feasible. And um, for, um, for the demand constraints, we used the sales data, um, and there were 125 constraints for that. And that um, another assumption was that the nodes um, these were the only nodes that were going to be used for um, our model for the simplicity of, um, for simplicity purposes, because um, we didn't have the locations and our reconditioning data to um, to use those as nodes um, for the whole cycle of cars going from the auction to the reconditioning to uh, the dealerships. And so, uh, the, so the decision criteria that uh, we used for, for creating the model was going to be consistent with the LP model, so whatever the LP model gave us for the results um, uh, as the top 35 cars to use. Um, those are the 35 cars that we use for this model. And um, the decision variables, um, we, it was 35 cars times each of the arcs from the, from the auction locations to the dealerships, and so that came out to 525 variables. And the purpose for our objective function is to minimize transportation costs, um, to minimize transportation costs, so that um, of the cycle of the uh, product needs. And so this is a diagram of our transportation um, network. And as you can see, there is three. Um, we picked three specific um, option sites, and these are the five dealerships of which cars will be um, uh, transferred to to be sold in the end. And and there's 15 arcs um, that in which a car can be transferred to. And so um, in total, um, our results, we got a total of 156,000 and some change of what um, the minimum cost of transportation of all of our 35 models would be. And in this picture, um, this is just a sample picture of, of some of the columns that we used. And the first column you'll see, which is car one, and um, and all the possible um, areas that the models could be transferred to. And so um, basically what this tells us is that it's important to um, buy cars in the same city or state which is their dealerships are located because that will produce like the minimum cost for, um, um, for getting, yeah, getting the minimum cost for transportation. And now I'll let Darla finish this up with uh, the recommendation Based on um, which type of budget Tricolor wants to use, we can now recommend 
the correct um, mix of cars that they kind of want to aim for at those locations, um, and in which locations to specifically target those vehicles. Um, we can also prioritize which vehicles should go through the pre-pump center first because they are more attractive to buyers, as well as mis minimizing the shipping costs from the auction sites to those dealerships. Um, some of our limitations were that we did have to um, eliminate a lot of the vehicles from production um, due to um, some data that didn't quite match up between the different data sets, and there were just a lot of unknowns. Um, we actually had a lot of fun figuring out what some of the parameters should be for some of our constraints because we had so many options. And so that's why we ended up with um, quite a few models. And so for further study, the first thing we would recommend would be to go through the reconditioning data and determine which repairs create the most profit. Um, you might have to repair a windshield, but do you have to put new windshield wipers on it and will the cost of that gain you more profit? because they do want to produce quality, so it's really good to understand what each repair does um, for the overall sell price of the vehicle. Um, next, we recommend looking into um, alternatives. How many customers walk away because they don't have the car they want, and how many customers don't buy um, their first preferred car, which would be data they have to get from the dealerships. Um, and then lastly, um, for the auction strategy, we would recommend um, a really detailed um, standard operating procedure of where they're going to go to get the car based on the model and then what criteria to purchase, whether it be on, the, on budget, miles, color, and make, so that when we look at the data, we can compare and see really where are the most profitable centers. Any questions? Yes. Above the two thousand dollar mark, but they weren't so high that they created any outliers. So it would have had to be like really, really huge differences to get anything to kind of pop out of the quartiles. And we calculated a profit um, in the first situation based on what does it currently cost to recondition that model on average. So what were some of your biggest challenges? Initially, it was kind of figuring out where to go, um, what was our direction going to be before we came up with these two models that we wanted to supply our client. Um, as far as that, it was really disheartening having to eliminate so much data, so the incomplete data was a huge challenge for us. And I found that we had so many options to go in for like capacity. Do we use the 450 that the recon centers can handle, or should we bump it down to what they're actually producing? Or that's why we did the three budget models, because it's like which budget should we use. And when we were doing the transportation model, um, when we couldn't find, because if I sold 100 cars, but I only bought 50, we're like, where did the other 50 go? So then we would check the recon data, and sometimes we'd find a supply there, and sometimes we wouldn't. So it was just there were so many options that we had to sit down and say, okay, this is what we're going with, because this makes the most sense. And um, I found that to be the most 